So I think the relationship between Australia and China is really bad right now. It's probably the worst that it's been in the last 30 years. I think Australia needs to be very careful because China is Australia's largest customer. 38% of Australian exports from iron ore to wine to beef to dairy products are actually exported to mainland China. So China by far and away is Australia's largest customer. So the tension that you have between the two countries just doesn't make any sense. Although I think there are a number of problematic areas that are causing tension between Australia and China. I think the first is that the United States is basically using Australia as a proxy or as a tool to try to contain and destabilize China. I think this is part and parcel what we've seen with the rioting in Hong Kong, with the attacks on Huawei, as well as um, on the U.S.-China trade war. So the United States is working closely with its allies, especially those in the five eyes, like Australia, like the United Kingdom, like Canada, to try to contain China's growth and China's um, increasing influence globally. So I think the first thing is Scott Morrison is basically a lapdog of Donald Trump, the president of the United States, and is just getting out in front and criticizing China. I think that's one part. The second part is there is a lot of um, xenophobia and yellow peril racism in Australia. I think it's always been there, but it's just starting to emerge publicly. It's become more acceptable for people to be um, xenophobic. And what you start to see is a lot of Australian think tanks, like the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, or ASPI, which is run by a man named Peter Jennings. They have analysts like Vicky Shu, as well as Fergus Ryan, who are really exaggerating and sensationalizing some of the actions that China's government is doing in the South China Sea or in Xinjiang, and they're using it to attack and criticize China. Now, why does ASPI do this? There are really two reasons. Their main funding comes from foreign governments like Mike Pompeo, the United States State Department, as well as ma weapons manufacturers like Raytheon. So these ASPI, people like Vicky Xu, try to spread fear about an increasing militarized China. Why? So that their donors, the weapons manufacturers, can sell more to governments. And we actually just saw this happen last week when the Australian government for the first time announced that it was going to install long-range missiles to counter the China threat. So you have the U.S. government is trying to destabilize China, and then you have organizations um, you know, really odious people, insidious people in the United, in Australia, like Vicky Shu, who benefit from peddling fear and peddling the idea that the Chinese are coming. Because I think Scott Morrison has started his very aggressive behavior, is wanting to take a very aggressive um, stand with China, and is really putting China down by saying Australian values, as if Chinese aren't moral. I think Scott Morrison is needs to learn how to be more respectful um, and needs to have a better idea of what's actually happening on the ground in China. But my bigger concern is not actually so much about Scott Morrison and the PM. It's about backbenchers. It's about people in the background. It's people like Tim Wilson, who's an MP uh, from the Melbourne area and very critical of China, or Andrew Hastie, who's another MP who makes up a lot of things. So the problem is that China is going to have to deal with yellow peril hate in the background from people in the government in their 40s in Australia as well as in the United States. In the short term, I'm very negative on Australia-China relations. I think in the long term, there's more reason to be hopeful um, because Australia and China are natural trade partners. I think tension between the two countries, frankly, is just stupid.